Hello everyone. Today's lesson, we are going to talk about the clothing rendering basics. This lesson includes an introduction to the rendering window and rendering parameters. So we will cover some photo properties, video properties and light properties. To explain the basic rendering functions today, we will need to open a project file that has a completed creation of a clothing model. The role of our offline rendering is to render our produced clothing into a more realistic and more delicate advanced clothing image. So for the first part of this tutorial, we will introduce the rendering window. To find the offline rendering tool, we must first see the menu bar in the upper left corner. This includes Home, Asset, Tool, Measure and Setting. What we need is under the Tool column. Now our layout looks a little bit crowded right now, so we'd better right click on the top bar and turn off the 2D window. Let's take a look at the first menu tool, Sync. Click and wait for a while. Now we can see everything in our 3D window, including the avatar and model, in the render view. In the render view, the overall lighting looks softer and more realistic, right? Firstly, we can see several small buttons at the bottom of the rendering bar. This button allows models and clothing to be viewed in a one-to-one -one ratio in the size you set. The buttons on the left of it allow you to manually zoom in and out to display a size you think is appropriate. Now further to the left, there is a lock view function. This allows your rendering window to not change due to the movement of our 3D window. Now if we uncheck this, we can view the results in real time. Both the 3D window and the rendering window will change in real time. When you feel that the rendering is almost complete, in addition to choosing to end the process, you can also right click and directly choose to save it or copy. And after copy, you can paste it into dialog boxes or documents as an image. Pressing on the pause button, we can find that adjusting the 3D model on the left will not affect the rendering results. Now I will introduce our region render function. This can save time when we only want to observe specific parts in our rendering. We first need to turn on sync, then click region render and select the part that needs to be partially rendered. You can also adjust the frame selection region as needed. The third button is Final Render. As we mentioned before, the Sync Render will follow any changed perspective in the 3D window. However, in Final Render mode, adjusting the model on the left will not affect the rendering angle. This function takes longer to render. You can estimate how much time is left from the progress bar in the upper right corner. The resulting picture will be of higher quality and more realistic. But you can choose to pause this process when you feel that the render has reached your expectation. This image will then automatically be saved. The fourth function is multi-image render. The small buttons on the top row will allow you to add and delete and reset rendering perspectives. If you need to add a new angle to render, adjust the model to a good view in the 3D window. Then click the plus button and that will add an image. These properties here on the right are basic structure and environment parameters. There is also a rotate animation function. This allows us to see our perspective in a 360 animation. If you want to adjust any of your perspectives, change it in the 3D window and then click this button again. In the lower right corner, you can choose to save this image or animation to local or to the cloud. Now in this next part, we will learn how to adjust the rendering parameters. Normally, when we click Render Image Property, the property bar on the right will pop up. If not, we can open it from the bar on the right. The first parameter is to set the size of the rendered image. The default values contain some common sizes. You can also use direction 
to assist in adjusting orientation. It is two types, vertical and horizontal. If the size does not fit after adjustment, you can manually adjust it. Unit refers to the unit of measurement of the image size. If you want a size other than the preset, you can modify it manually. Note that when maintain ratio is turned on, modifying a single value will cause another value to be changed in conjunction. Let's look at the background. You may be confused why the color display here is white, yet our background is black. The reason is because we have transparency turned on. If we turn it off, here we can see the color displayed in our window. We can also adjust the color settings. The texture can be selected locally on our computer. Here is a demonstration for you. If it is not suitable, we can also delete it. Real model photo blending is automatically enabled after we turn on the real life rendering function. We can introduce and explain this in more advanced courses. The save section allows you to customize the format and save path of the finished rendered image. Further down involves some more advanced rendering parameters. For example, we can decide whether to use the computer's CPU or GPU for rendering. Generally speaking, the rendering time of CPU is longer, however, the effect is better. Also, when the CPU is used for rendering, the computer is more prone to crashing. Under Usage, we can also customize the proportion of computer performance occupied by rendering. The larger the value, the faster the calculation. Further detailed adjustments involve the noise threshold and the max render time which can be selected or typed in specific values according to your needs. There are also four options for the quality level of your rendered image. Here is a small tip. If you need to fastly render, you can select the mode of light cache to accelerate this time, but the effect will not be as good as brute force. Bounce is also a parameter that can be modified. Generally speaking, the larger the value, the finer the effect of the light will be. The Improve Reflection below is a default choice, which can ensure the true luster of the fabric. Turning on Denoise can assist the noise threshold above to further reduce the small black dots on the surface of the clothing in rendering. Next, let's introduce our light property. The top buttons allow you to save or turn on your own preset lighting. There are also preset lights in the light library, which includes various contrasts, angles, and distance, as well as virtual sunlight in different seasons. First, let's take a look at the effect of medium contrast. After this ground shadow is turned on, the shadow of the model under the light will appear in our rendering window. Next, I will introduce the dome light. In order to make it more obvious for everyone to see, I will switch to the default lighting mode. Now at this time, there is only one dome light in the whole scene. Now if you choose not to enable the top light here, you can see that the entire model and clothes will be dark. But if you turn it off in other light modes, the impact may be that there is no light at the top. However, the other lights will still exist, so the distribution of overall light will change. So if the entire rendering environment has no other lights, generally the top light must be turned on. Shadow refers to whether the surface of the clothing displays the shadow caused by light. In order for your renders to be more realistic, this is also checked by default. A fixed specular means whether to make the clothing reflective to the light. Ticking it will make the fabric more textured. 
Now I will show you how locked camera works. If you turn it on and then adjust the angle of the model, the light will keep its position in the world coordinates. I can turn it off for you to compare. At this time, the light will follow the rotation of the model and it will remain unchanged relative to the garment. In addition to lighting presets, we have also prepared a complete set of lighting libraries for you. The environment map library is an example of this. The different presets we choose will only be displayed in the render window. After choosing a suitable environment map, you can adjust the overall tone of the environment. The intensity and angle of the light layout can also be adjusted. When visibility in render is turned on, we can see our environment map in the rendering window, which generally does not need to be displayed. Because if we turn this on after adding other lights, some shadows from the light themselves will be rendered too. After the overall environment maps have been set, sometimes in order to achieve a richer personalized display, we will use the add light function. This includes area light, sphere light, direction light, spotlight, IES light. Click to add it to the default position and the effect will be superimposed layer by layer. To delete, you can click and select delete on the keyboard. Different light sources also have corresponding parameters that can be adjusted in the property bar on the right. The last IES light is a light that simulates a natural point effect in the real world. Here is another small tip. If you added too many lights, it will increase the rendering time. OK, let's see the final rendering effect. Um, here I have one of my recent works, and I want to show you the comparison of um, the rendering uh, process uh, from the previous version and this new version, the 6.1. Uh, one of the most significant changes is the real-time rendering that is speeding uh, a lot uh, faster your uh, workflow. Uh, previously, we have to sync in, in, to be able to see exactly what results we will have uh, on our final rendering. Uh, the most importantly, the textures and the fabrics, how do they um, reflect uh, with the light uh, in, in, uh, during the rendering, you will have to uh, sync and wait until the image will appear. Now, next to the simulation uh, uh, button, we have also um, the, ver the different versions of the rendering uh, ways. My favorite is the ray tracing rendering, where basically you can clearly see uh, the final result that you will have on your uh, rendering. Um, the other thing now we have is that we have the render settings. We have the normal rendering and we have the translucent rendering that is basically optimizing uh, one small semi-transparent effect on top of the normal rendering. Um, to be honest, I'm not really much using that, but uh, what you can do on the render settings, uh, you can uh, combine... Uh, so now, my normal rendering will be actually the same with my transparent rendering that it won't change now they are one i'm using the ray tracing rendering which is more realistic and the other thing uh you i want to show you is that on the ray tracing rendering um you see at this current point if i want to change my lights uh let's put uh, lime light you can see directly what is happening on this screen Oops. Yeah, what is happening on this screen and this screen at the same time. So offline rendering and 
Real-time rendering is seen now. Currently, the new version of lights is complementing uh, way better the textures. If, let's say, you have a black garment, it will clearly uh, show um, the lighting will be more specifically uh, better for uh, the black garment, so you can show all the details um, of um, the tech and the textures uh, much more efficiently. Uh, the same happening with the white garments with light uh, colors. Um, but also it will be working for the glossy uh, garments if we have puffers let's say that uh, the texture is a little bit glossy that will implement and uh, will the, the final result will be much more realistic and better with this current uh, new uh, light settings that is updated you don't have to do nothing it's already comes in the new version but for the ones that been using the older version we do see the difference and so now i want to save the same video and you see how much improved is the lighting that basically uh, what is going to save it just a second let me see okay let's save it to the desktop i'm really curious to see how much how long it's going to take and what will be the timing how much faster um it will be then uh, rendering frame to frame images and what is the difference on the results so guys my rendering is done and i'm so excited to show you it, it took me only 30 minutes using the new feature and i will show you the results that i got this is actually what i get this is the new version this is the 6.1 version have a look at this in 30 minutes my rendering okay we talk about 200 frames and this is the original this is the original rendering i'm showing you now it's, it looks exactly the same there is no really difference this is again this is the new version with a 6.1 this rendering took me 30 minutes the previous one it's 200 frames okay and I don't know it took me it took me a lot because also uh, it should have been overnight and something more so we talk about huge difference okay we talk about let's say 15 hours and 30 minutes okay that's a huge difference so I highly recommend you really uh, below the video you will find the link where you can get the free um, get access sign up and get the free trial and just really 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 trust me try it you will not regret it and you will find that your workflow will speed up like super highly all right this lesson is over if you like this video please like and share and comment to leave us a message we will reply promptly thank you guys so much see you in the next one